It was a brutal affair on the opening weekend in Perpignan. The perfect start for rookie coach Sam Burgess. The debutant Aaron Lindop scored. Last season's grand finalists then went down to 12 as Mickey McLaurin saw red. The Catalans dug deep to clinch a big win. Jordan Abdul on his Dragons debut was the key to unlocking the Warrington defence in the south of France. Well, welcome to the Halliwell Jones as the Easter Rivals round continues. Perfect conditions, bright sunshine as both Warrington and Catalan aim for top spot. A win for both, and they would go top. Well, this is how it looks so far in the games that we have seen. Saints hitting top spot after their dramatic victory over their arch rivals, Wigan's first defeat of the season. But a Warrington win, and they will hit the summit if Catalan win by 14 or more, then the Dragons will go top of the pile. Hull KR and Leeds round off the top six. So this is how the two teams line up this afternoon. First of all, crucially for Warrington, uh, young Leon Hayes continues uh, in the halfback to George Williams returns. That means that Stefan Ratchford is only 18th man. Also back from injury is Ben Curry. And in the centres, there's a Super League debut, the Papua New Guinea star, Roderick Ty. Well, a big blow for the Dragon, Theo Farge withdrawing from the side this morning after complaining of uh, tightness in his calves. So youngster Ugo Tison comes in to partner Jordan Abdul. Tison with his first game in nearly a year. Nicarima and Borg are still injured, so Cesar Rouge continues to deputise at fullback. And in the pack, Mickey McLaurin plays his first Super League game since he was red carded against Warrington on that opening weekend. Well, two of the top scorers in Super League this season, both teams and Matt Dufty and Tom Davis. Dufty has been one of the top stars so far of 2024. Six tries already, while Davis has scored five times in his last three games. Both have won four of their opening five matches, and both are targeting that grand final in October. Well, alongside me is former Super League star Terry O'Connor. And we've had Wigan against Saints, we've had Hull Hull KR. And there's no reason to suggest that this won't be as entertaining and won't be as dramatic. It's fabulous, isn't it? The Easter weekend. And you know what? Nothing between these two sides. The, the conditions are absolutely perfect. And it promises to be a, a bruising battle. Well, you go back to that first game and you've got two of the, the heavyweights Everyone's expecting them to be there or thereabouts come the end of the year. You look at the squads, littered with stars, and that's what we want to see. Entertaining rugby on a day like this, the Easter weekend, the fans turn out in their numbers, and I'm sure it is going to be an absolute belter, Stuart. I think it's fair to say, especially where Warrington are concerned, Catalan have been in two out of the last three grand finals, but for Warrington, they'll get a fair idea of where they are after this afternoon's game. Yeah, well, they've won the last five games, haven't they, since that loss in round one down in the South France. And, you know, you look at them last time they played, and we watched them down in the capital. They scored ten tries. They were phenomenal against London. Some of the young guns making names for themselves. And they've got a high completion rate. They believe in what the coach is saying to them. But the next few games is going to be at the test, and we'll really see where Warrington sit in Super League over the next three or four weeks. Jack Smith is our referee. Chris Kendall is the video referee. And Jordan Abdul will get us underway here at the Halliwell Jones. Interesting, Warrington winning the toss uh, and choosing uh, to receive and choosing actually to attack the end away to our right where the sun has been. Um, Shining down on, Just wait on uh, what will Just be wait the fullback Cesar Rouge. So we shall see Abdul to get us underway. Both wait. have won four yeah, 
yeah, out of five at the start of the season. And it's Warrington against Catalan with the prized top spot in Super League at the end of Easter Saturday. And the first charge there from, Open square, from James boys, Harrison. Ten holes. Two big Hole, teams. Wait. Go Two huge sides, and, and I think you look at the, the Mickey McLaurin, the number nine, Two. who's come Move, back Square into the, 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 the Move, field. Hold. Like, you Hold. look at what Catalan have got to deal with, and the players that they've got missing in, in Nicarima, Faj, and Mog, there's going to be some pressure on the young players. Third. The senior Jordan. players really Ten do all, need Catalan. to step up wait. for Catalan Go. and lead by example. Go. 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 The won't be afraid oh, to goes, move the rock ball around. That is one of the key elements in what Sam Burgess is trying to do here to turn a team Move from nearly men to winning men. Ball goes back for young Danny, Leon Hayes ball. who launches a high kick. First tester there for uh, the youngster Cesar Rouge at full back uh, and takes it well. Interesting, you and I were talking before about the fact that Sam Burgess is not afraid to use his youngster. Stefan Ratchford left out. Uh, Drinkwater may also have been fit to play. Move He's together, left out. Warrington. Leon Hayes playing Adam Holroyd. And, and, and that pretty much sends out the message of, of the way that Burgess Three. wants out to play James. his team. Well, I love Square. the attitude of the club. I love the theft that they're showing in the, the young players, especially the likes of Leon Hayes and Adam Holroyd, who, who could have been left oh, out the, the side ball, for man. senior players. And Stay it's easy hold. to leave them out for those Where experienced boys, but it's a different mindset. Oh in 2024 from this Warrington Wolves side. So many times they've lost some of the youngsters to neighbouring clubs, but they're trying to address that now. Busquet with the drive. Ball on the last comes back for Jordan Abdul. And that goes high, high, high. And it's a, a good take in the end, wasn't it, from Josh Eulis. He's been in good form, good try scoring form as well. Both had convincing wins in the Challenge Cup last weekend. Warrington uh, here against the London Broncos and a convincing victory for Catalan in West Yorkshire against the, the championship side, Halifax. Here is Ashton, looking to run the ball out, as we That's saw on Good Friday. That's a huge carry, that yeah, from the winger. Yeah, St Helens, the, wing, the wingers are absolutely crucial. You know, they made the mistake, uh, Paul Vaughan, but that was a huge carry from Ashton and it makes it so much easier for the prop forwards let me tell you if they get it onto that ball he knows he's made a mistake he acknowledges that he tried to hit the ball the ball on the advantage line you could see come on to that at speed but just couldn't take it first mistake from Paul Vaughan what a good player he's been the Australian for for Warrington also very vocal and I know he's a big help to Sam Burgess as well one of the the main men, if you like, in the in the Warrington dressing room. But the first chance here, then, first real chance with ball in hand for either side. Arta Romano, midway inside the Warrington half. Ben Garcia, what a good player he is, and what a good player he has been. The captain of the Catalan Dragons, 12 years in Perpignan for Garcia. Little pass there from Tisson. Getting involved early on, the youngster. Nearly a year since Hugo Tisson has played a, a first team game for Catalan. Here is Tariq Sims. He's been one of the, the signings of the season for me so far. Tariq Sims at, at Catalan. Couple of tackles left in this set. Garcia, they go right now. Abdul, there's room on that right hand side for Davis. Can Davis find a way through? He can. Tom Davis with the try, and they struck as quickly as that. Quick hands, swift hands out to the right hand side. And for Tom Davis, that's now six tries in three games and four minutes. Well, it comes off the mistake, doesn't it? From Vaughan, you give the field position to Catalan. Like I said, so many of those players who, who know how to play the game, and they just shift the ball over to the right hand side. And Abdul goes deep into the line, and Tiso, what a great ball from him, just to hold up that defence, just to give Tom Davis a bit of a chance on the outside. When Abdul gets the ball, he goes out, doesn't he? He manages to get a one-on-one -on -one with Davis and Ashton. Ashton just cuts back in field and scores the opening try. Yeah, I think Matty Ashton will be pretty disappointed, to be fair, with his, with his defensive effort there. But Tom Davis is a man in form. 
and Steve McNamara will be absolutely thrilled. First time with ball in hand, and Catalan hit the front. They've won. Oh, they're looking for a, a third consecutive victory here at the Halliwell Jones. Not the start that Sam Burgess wanted, and it certainly silenced the big crowd here in Warrington. And Abdul off the touchline. Abdul taking over. Well, he's he's a brilliant goal kicker in his own right, but Artem Morg has been the one uh, first choice kicker. But this is the right side of the field for a left footed kicker. Can Abdul turn four into six? What a good well, kick. Do you know what? For the moment it left his boot, he knew where it was going. And it's 6 0 to the Catalan Dragons. So did those Warrington fans behind the, the sticks as well. And Tom Davis, what a, what a try. But give some credit here to Abdul. Look at that. He attracts the eyes of four defenders. Tiso as well. When he goes, he gets that one on one with Ashton. When you're playing in rugby league, you're looking for a one on one with your opponent. And that's just a, a great finish and a great start. They have a really good record here at Warrington Cats and looking for the third consecutive win for the Halliwell Jones, but you know what, that's just poked the fire for me. But we know it's going to ba uh, be a battle. That is for sure. The two coaches have a fantastic relationship. You may remember Steve McNamara gave Sam Burgess his Super League debut as a 17-year-old, would you believe? Uh, back at Bradford in the Bradford Leeds derby in the heyday when Ossel would have 25,000 on. The play on, on the last. Everyone just stopped for a moment there. Abdul puts the kick forward, chases on. Oh, it's taken by Johnston. Matt Dufty was left grasping fresh air. And all of a sudden, everyone just stopped and waited to see what was going to happen. And now we know what has happened. Abdul with the kick through. And it was a pinch me try for Tom Johnston. And in the space of seven minutes, Catalan go 10 0 in front. Well, he was outstanding last year, wasn't he? Tom Johnson made it into the, the dream team, scored 27 tries. Phenomenal. And you know, you give him a chance, and again, it's Jordan Abdul. He reacts to what's in front of him. You can see Michael McLaurin there. He's looking, he's thinking that there's going to be a penalty because he couldn't pass that ball. All of a sudden, you, the recognition of space from Jordan Abdul is there, and he plays what he sees. And it's quality play from the half, kicks the ball, and then all of a sudden, it's a foot race, isn't it? Johnston, he's brave, he goes for it. Matt Dufty, he just can't quite get it. Two of the quickest men in Super League, and the one word in a Catalan jersey, well, he comes away with the spoils. And what a quick start. Within eight minutes, they've already scored two tries. Well, well, well. Speculation is already rife that both Tom Davis and Tom Johnston won't be playing for the Catalan Dragons in 2025. Word is that Johnston is going back to Wakefield and Tom Davis could be going to, to Hull KR. I know they've got replacements possibly lined up, but they will, be, they will both be a big loss for the Dragons. They've been a real part of what Catalan have achieved over the last two or three years. Abdul, who's been outstanding so far, Makes it 12 0. And Warrington are completely stumped. Yeah, they are. You just look at the way that Catalan have turned up for this, the senior players. Like I said, Jordan Abdul, he had to be involved an awful lot along with McLaurin. The two wingers, obviously, you get the ball out wide to them, they'll come up with some points. But probably Warrington, the shell shot here, they didn't expect the start that they've got. The third player, every third player that they seem to have the ball, they seem to be winning collision. Romano it was who got him into decent field position before they kicked that ball. But they look to play, play on the front foot. Got plenty of skill within the ranks, Catalan. But it all stemmed from that, that mistake, that early mistake, hasn't it, from Paul Vaughan. And Catalan have got their tails up, they flew in yesterday and they're attacking again now. Brilliant break or a half break for Marta Romano. What an important tackle that was by Vaughan. But at the moment, Warrington are being overrun. Well, Catalan, they do favour the left-hand side for the short side players. 
more than double what they make on the right. Probably because Jordan Abdul's on that side. Abdul testing Dufty once more. Takes it well, but great tackle coming in from his opposite number, Cesar Rouget. Wow, Catalan are up for this. Yeah, look at him now, the line speed as well seems to be really aggressive. Nice and tight, There's, they're not really giving any options to Warrington. Harrison, the man who's tasked with bringing the ball away, they're looking for maybe Ashton now to carry this. Well, the crowd bolstered today by two and a half thousand kids uh, away to our left of the away end as Hayes gets the ball away. Uh, great initiative for Warrington, allowing them in for a, for a pound, the old kids for a, a quid scheme, but the offer has been snapped up. And it's a snap up of a penalty for the Catalan Dragons, Paul Vaughan. Uh, apologetic there but another error from the veteran Aussie yeah well that that's it's an error from from Warrington you know when he when he's picked up only made 25 meters 25 meters carrying the ball they were aggressive they were dominant they were just trying to monster Paul Vaughan on his side and the penalty has been blown putting the man in a dangerous position it's Rouge who's down a third choice fullback, Cesar Rouge, by the way. He deputising for both Jaden Nicarima and Artem Morg. He's been doing a lot of work with Sam Tompkins, by the way, in the last couple of weeks. Here we go. So he gets all of the ball, look at him, he's trying to use that footwork. He comes in, he lands on his shoulder. He picks him up between the legs so I reckon you're gonna get 10 minutes in the sim bin here you drop on you look they're, they're consistent aren't they the officials Paul, okay. well, let's see what he has to say you put him in a really dangerous position but he lands shoulder first yes. which takes you to a 10 minutes in the sim bin well there we go a shake of the head there from Paul Vaughan but he can't have too many complaints. Well, do you know what? Fair play to Paul Vaughan. He knew straight away as soon as he, he did it, and the man was lifted up, Rouget, and he lands on his shoulder. He knew that he probably could be in trouble, probably had a look at from the ref, the video referee. As soon as he just upends him, then it's always going to be a penalty. You know, players, coaches, fans want consistency right the way through the year. The rules were set early on in the year. That is a sim bit every time. And here come the Catalan Dragons again, 12-0 up. After seven minutes, they're hunting down some more points again. Abdul, good tackle there on Artem Romano. No, that was the wrong option, and that was out the back to Rouge. It was a two-on-one with Foulis. Bousquet, straightening up, looking to offload. Julian Bousquet right in front of the Warrington Post. They can ill afford to concede another try. McLaurin, chance there. Is it a try? For Sims, has Tariq Sims got the ball down? Well, the video ref is going to, no to have a look at this. Make sure he doesn't ground the ball before I get there. There's no try, it's the old field call. Let's hear what Chris Kendall has to say. Okay, tackle four, we have a live call of no try. Okay, tackle four, live call of no try. Checking the grounding, please. Guys, here's in possession. Okay, I can't tell on that angle if he ever gets the ball down. We'll work through the angles to see if we've got anything else. Okay, again on that one, I can't tell if the ball gets to the ground. That angle's gonna be no good either. This angle might show me something. Okay, does the ball get to the ground? Gas here is in possession. And at that point, 
the white of the ball is on the ground. Thank you, I have made my decision. Ben Garcia, the Catalan captain, Ben Garcia, was the man who was closest to it. The decision is coming. Is it another try for the Catalan Dragons? And it is. Catalan have extended their lead. Warrington have conceded. But how good and how aware was Ben Garcia? The captain knew exactly what he was doing. He spotted the gap. And Garcia, with his first Super League try of the season, crucial. Three tries in the first 12 minutes. Well, there's some decent firepower. That's what they're playing off. Again, it's good kick, isn't it, from Abdul? That's the try previous. And then you look at what they're doing. It's just a little tip on plate. That's what will disappoint Sam Burgess. Look, it's a straight tip on plate. He runs at Dufty, he runs at Adam Allroyd. Both of those, normally better defenders than that. And Abdul makes it three out of three. Davis, Johnston, Garcia, three goals from Abdul. 12 and a half minutes gone, 18-0 to Catalan. Yeah, look, an incredible start from them, isn't it? Garcia, he crashes over, and it's just a little play. He knows he's big enough, he's strong enough. He's competitive enough to get over for that try. And they'll be disappointed, but Steve McNamara will be happy. And again, it all came to mistake, didn't it? The penalty given away by Paul Vaughan. A lifting in the tackle, Vaughan in the sin bin. Well, we said, didn't we, at the start, Terry, that at the end of this game, we're going to get a fair idea of Warrington's credentials. And at the moment, they are being given a real lesson by last season's grand well, final. It just feels like they need to get their hands on the ball at the minute. When they have got their hands on the ball, they've made mistakes. You can see, look at that, the footwork from Romano. McClure up there, who was having a real go at Jordan Abdul because he wasn't in the right place. You don't mess with Mickey McClure on halfway. 13 minutes gone, 18-0. Abdul with the kick and bounces awkwardly. And Catalan have it back. That was a forward pass, yeah. I'm sure, yeah. Forward pass on the last. But Jordan Abdul is just causing problem after it's, it's a nightmare for Warrington when Abdul gets hold of the ball or kicks the ball. Do you know what? He kicked that ball. I don't think that was the kick he was looking at. I think that ball came off the side of his foot. It was horrible. It was going everywhere. It made it really difficult for Warrington. Look at that. He just kicks it over the field. It's, it takes a bounce, and it's a lucky bounce because it comes in to the hands of another Catalan player, Ikevalu. Well, they get the hands. Let's see what Warrington can do in this set of six. Back-to-back -back penalties will help. And that will help them. They need the penalties, they need the field position. Well, they've got enough good players, Warrington. You look through the side and George Williams, Leon Hayes, Matt Dufty, Danny Walker, those four players in, in particular can really cause problems to this Catalan side. Well, this will be the first time that Warrington have had the ball in decent field position, attacking the Catalan line. What could they do with it? Harrison just about kept hold of it, didn't he? James Harrison. 20 yards away, trailing 18 0 already. You feel they have to score here. Here's Williams. Dusty finds Fewless, but there's nowhere to go. One, two, three, four Catalan players were shadowing Josh Fewless. Roderick Ty. At dummy half, made his debut in the cup last weekend. This is his first Super League game in a Warrington shirt. Here's Danny Walker and Curry. Quick hands and Hayes, little kick through there by Williams and, and taken well. As he just short, I think he just short, and they try to go from dummy half there. The ball has gone to ground. Toby King, it was. I think they were just too eager. Well, good scramble in defence, wasn't it? From Catalan. To prevent that try, there was enough players in a Warrington jersey in the frame to get over the line. You can see that Tom Davis sees a Rougier, did a decent job. Then all of a sudden, they go for the dive over. With King, can't quite get there. Some strong defence. That was the first time that they were tested, and they had all the answers as well, those Catalan defenders. 
bit of panic mode for Warrington there. Desperate to score. 18 nil down well, at home. It took them 16 minutes to have a, have a go at the try line. It doesn't yeah. normally take them that long. That's they have to win by 14 points or more to go top of the Super League table. 18 nil up inside 12 minutes. They're doing what they had to do. They flew over early morning on Friday on purpose so they could all sit down as a team and watch the, the Good Friday clash between Saints and Wigan. It's worked. Here's Dufty. Needs some magic from Matt Dufty. Top of the Super League charts for metres. Tackle bursts and clean breaks. He needs some of those today to get Warrington back in business. Yeah, you look at that, he's second for tries, third for try assists. Like I said at the start, he's been absolutely on fire. You get a set restart here. Looking to shift the ball out to Ashton as he... Oh, nearly half break from Ashton. That was a, that was a good tackle by uh, Tison, wasn't it? Crucial tackle from Ugo Tison. Deputising for Dio Farge. Cruncher. Tarek Sims oh, takes no prisoners speed. in the tackle. Big line speed, that from Milo Meek, and that stops you in your tracks. Short pass Help! from Hayes, already the last. What can they do with this? It's Fitzgibbon who was stopped on the last. They go the short side, little kick through. Cesar Rouge will... Sensibly, knock the ball down, it'll be a goal line dropout. And finally, finally, Warrington building some pressure, but trailing 18 0 after 18 minutes. Well, you give the ball to somebody who can cause some damage, and Matt Dufty is the man full of confidence in 2024. He calls for it on the short side, sees that nothing on, he kicks back towards the sticks, tries to interest Rougier into the ball, which he does, knocks it dead, and it's another set of six that Warrington will have here now. Yeah, Jordan Abdul just taking a quick look at the shot clock, running it down to one before getting his kick away. Decent spell for Warrington, but they have to score. Williams with the offload, and Adam Holroyd is going nowhere. Good defence again by Tarek Sims and Mickey McLaurin. You know what, even at 36 years of age, McClorum is key, isn't he, to what Catalan are doing, especially in defence. Here's young Leon Hayes. And they get a, a set restart to the pressure building. It was Garcia who was guilty there of holding on in the tackle. Walker at dummy half. Here is Williams. What can they do with ball in hand? Hayes again. Oh, chance for the line. Superbly. Oh, it was up. Forward pass, yeah, I, think. No, I think it was Ben Curry was stood in the line. Obstruction. Yeah, he just goes behind him. Sure, yeah. it was, was was Ben Curry. Only well, spotted. Holroyd had his tail up and his hopes up. Well, he scored two last time out in the capital against London. He thought he was in. Again, here you could just see that he gets caught in the line. A couple of plays in the obstruction rule that it's given. And the fans don't like it. Well, they won't, but they're 18 0 down. Now, a different sort of speed in the game, though. The last 10 minutes or so, they started really slow, Warrington, and they got blown away, didn't they, by Catalan? Rouget. Well, he does just well. Here's McLaurin. Yeah, you just want to be running the ball with some support here. As a forward, you want to tip on runner with you. Garcia was just turning up with Navarrete then. Well, that's, a, that's a front row of immense experience, isn't it? Bousquet, McClorum and, and Navarrete. Rouget gets the ball out and here is Davis on the far side. Scored the first try, set Catalan in motion after just four minutes. Good charge. Chris Sassai, impact player off the bench. And Abdul now chases off for Johnson, takes it well, Cammy. Ball is bouncing all over the place, stays in play. Abdul recollects it. The bounce of the ball there favoured Warrington. They looked for a moment as if Johnson was going to grasp it and, and get another one. 
Rouget with the kick towards the post. And the ball is tapped down. Oh, that's away now, the chance for Ashton. Has he got the legs? Brilliant tackle. Well, it's totally enjoying this because they're going end to end. That was Chris Sassai who got across to stop Ashton. No, it's just outstanding play, isn't it? From both sides. The little tip on play from Chris Sattai that sets it all up. Now all of a sudden on the back of more speed from Warrington. There's a penalty. Just a bit too much from, from Catalan. Matt Duff, they come crashing onto that ball. Hit it at speed. Michael McLaurin knew that he had to try and slow it down. So his teammates could get back and set. Because they had them on the counter. I think that was the old head of the club experience. Well, like you said, the first... to give the penalty away. Yeah, the 36-year-old knowing exactly what he's got to try and do. Getting caught on the wrong side of the rook. Getting caught underneath Matt Dufty, but just tucking him in long enough to help his side out. Sasai is on for Bousquet. Two minutes gone. Paul Vaughan is back after his 10 minutes in the sin bin. That cost Warrington another try. Williams there for Holroyd again. Fearsome defence from the Catalan Dragons. Here's Hayes now. Williams in the line. Little step for George Williams. Only his third appearance this season, George Williams because of injuries. Musgrove. Again, Walker trying to marshal his troops. They go the short side. Williams with the kick through. And Tom Davis it was, who was quickest under pressure there from Lockman Fitzgibbon. Well, Warrington starting to build a, a head of steam, but they've got to make this pressure pay, you feel, with points. You know, he's a well way to kick. He was under some pressure from Rougier, George Williams. And he just manages to get the right contact on the ball, which just makes them force it and gets another set of six. They force it dead. George Williams now on his side are getting enough field position now to score some points. Well, he goes short here, Catalan. Well, it's tipped back and it's picked up by Ikevalu. Did it go backwards? So what is... Jack Smith saying, he said, the ball went forwards from the tip back. It was worth the gamble, it nearly paid off, but Warrington will get the ball. Yeah, exactly. On the negative for them, though, because the ball goes forward, that they're going to give that field position up again. They've got, what, 20 metres, 22 metres away to defend the line. They've done remarkably well. Every time they've been asked some questions recently, they managed to come up trumps. Can they keep Warrington out in this set? Williams... Dusty, great inside pass there for Ashton. That was a, a set move from the scrum. Yeah, well, that'll set the alarm bells going morning when you've got Ashton and Dusty, probably two of the quickest men linking up. Here is Roderick Ty, nowhere to go. 15 minutes to go to half time. Williams now, and here is Vaughan. Not been the best of days so far for the Aussie prop, Paul Vaughan. Walker and Williams with a good pass for Dufty. Can Dufty swivel and turn and gets the ball out now for Skewlis? Skewlis straightens up. Big ankle tap there. What a tackle from Tom Johnston. That ankle tap stopped a certain try. But now it's Williams with the kick through. And across comes and it, it just Tissot. Tissot. And I think he may well have knocked the ball forward. So more defending for Catalan to do. But I'll tell you what, that was a magnificent effort from Tom Johnston to deny his opposite number, Josh Fuller. A lot of incredible defence from Catalan, just to keep them out. Well, Tiso just loses possession, but the scramble either side of the post has been really, really good. And Fulis gets up, he has a crack. Tom Johnston prevents it along with Rougier. But good, clever play again from Warrington. The pressure is mounting on Catalan. Williams again. Here is Dusty. Dusty play ball, brought down play ball. Play it. by Tissot. Trying to throw the ball quickly. Williams looking for a way through. There's no way. That was through a dark corridor, that for George Williams. Here is Hayes. Good play for Crowther. Feel they've got to make this pressure pay. 
gets the ball inside. The twist and the turn and the try from Joe Philbin and the pressure has paid. And Warrington are on the board. Dave Mugrove it was who got the ball inside. And Zane Mugrove, the New Zealander, twists and turns and scores. And Warrington get their reward. They are back in it. Well, the pressure was just too much for Catalan. Seems to have been present, pre defending the line and protecting that line for the last seven or eight minutes. And the impact that you want from your bench players was there from Musgrove. He just comes crashing onto the ball. Catalan couldn't quite deal with it. They were trying to apply pressure with the defence. And Walker shapes to go one side, goes the other side. He gets a one-on-one, -on -one, gets on the outside of Mike McMeekin. And Danny Walker does enough. Again, when you've got a nine that goes from dummy half like that, takes a couple of steps, probably spooks the first and second marker close to the... First and second defender close to the rook. And it just enables that man, Musgrove, to get over for Warrington's opening try. A few listen in front. The try have been coming, but they had to score. They had to make the pressure pay. 18 nil down after 12 minutes. And they are back in this. Fulis adds the, ex adds the extras, and I think there was, a, there was a speaker there behind the, the post, which he hit at the top of the stand, and it dropped down onto the concourse. Well, uh, Danny Walker against Moscow, that one-on-one. -on -one. It was impossible to stop the, the big fella, wasn't it? It was interesting looking at before the game as well. Josh Furlis, he was practicing out for the warm-up five minutes before everyone else. Just getting some tips on Stefan Ratchford, who's 18th man in this game. They're just stopping play okay, for mate. a moment, oh, just to make okay, sure we're that, that the spectator we're behind go the post the is OK. What happened was it's is that yeah, Josh we'll Hewlis's we'll go, successful conversion attempt, it hit one of the speakers it, it the underneath the top of the down. stand, and the speaker it dropped the light, down yeah. into the concourse. Yeah, we're going to go, well, The medical staff there now are just it's making sure that the individual who was hit is OK. We and we've got thumbs up. We've got thumbs up from the fourth official who's been over to check with the medical staff and see if anyone was hit. Well, that's good news if everyone's yeah. okay. So we're back underway. 18 points to six in favour of the Catalan Dragons. Both have suffered only one defeat so far this season. Catalan losing. And Headingley against Leeds, and of course, Warrington's only defeat coming ben, the opening weekend when they were beaten 16-10 at the Stan Shieldburn Brutus. And the teams will clash again in Perpignan at the end of May. Williams with the offload, and here is Ty now, Roderick Ty, tackled by Jordan Abdul. Good defence. Okay. Warrington here, can they... Can they go back to back? Can they cause trouble as Hayes puts up a high towering kick towards the far side and it's well taken there, diffusing the situation. Tom Davis, 18 6, with 10 and a half minutes to go to half time. It was a great kick, wasn't it? And Leon Hayes just dropped it just in front of the try line. And you can see again just how valuable is Tom Davis. Two carries in this set of six. Very eager for work coming out of yardage. Just look up with the adult backfield with yeah. those wingers. No, no Johnson, they're just putting in the work, aren't they? And Abdul digs the little kick over, one bounce into touch. And that's just good thinking after all the pressure that they've been under yeah. for the last 10 minutes, just taking the sting out of it. Well, that's how you manage the game, isn't it? And Jordan Abdul, that wasn't like an attacking kick, knowing that Tom Johnson would Tom Johnson did all the hard work. He came in field, he got the quick play of the ball, he pokes his nose through the line. And Jordan Abdul is just looking for the sideline just to take the sting out of the game like i said they've been under a bit of pressure but he does his job well Jordan? 10 minutes to half time 
King it was. But they need Dufty, they need Williams, they need the speedsters. They need to get involved. King once again offloads, does well. Walker brought down just inside his own half of the field. Much more like it, isn't it, with ball in hand? Yeah. Quick you know, play that, the ball. Structured player come playing off the back of an offload with good go forward on the back of that. You've got Williams shifting it. The tie just couldn't offload the ball again. Johnston firm in defence. Last tackle. Williams. The few list to chase. Well, is that a penalty? No, that's that Tarek Sims with a late hit there. Yeah, they're going to get the penalty, aren't they? Tarek oh, Sims. George Williams, yeah. Yeah, well, George Williams is still probably remembering that, that shot in the first game when Tarek Sims folded him like a deck chair and he kicks the ball up, you can see it doesn't quite hit him in the midriff like it did in round one but it's enough to get the penalty takes no prisoners Tarek Sims He's does he of course the third of the Sims brothers to play in Super League Ashton who played at Warrington Corbin Sims of course who played at, at Hull KR but a real opportunity to get back into it now for Warrington. Here's Musgrove. Move now, mate. Now that close to the line. Philbin plays it. Walker to the right-hand side. Not the best of passes. Picked up by Ty. That'll just take the momentum out of it for the Warrington Wolves. Holroyd and Williams. Oh, good hit that was John it? Desiree. Good hands again, Williams, long pass out there, looking for Ashton. Has Ashton got the, the strength to go through? Davis in there with the tackle, along with Ikevalu. Here is Williams again, long looping pass out, back inside for Ashton. Ashton picks it up, and Ashton scrambles over. And it's Toby King, I think it is. It was Ashton who tapped the ball back. And it's Toby King who scores the try. Well, Jack Smith just wants it confirmed. He thinks it's a try. We'll just get it checked by the video ref, Chris Kendall. OK, tackle five. We're checking the touch line. Ball is collected by Ashton. Passed inside. Caught by King. And then we'll go straight to the grounding. It's not grounded at that point. Still not grounded. And the ball is grounded. I've made my decision. Well, well, well. A try out of nothing. It was Ashton who tapped it back. It was King who did the damage. And with seven minutes to half time, we've got a game on Easter Saturday here at the Halliwell Jones. Toby King with the try. And that few list can reduce the deficit to just six points. Now they're in the game. Toby King on his 200th career appearance. Well, he goes in and didn't warrant to need that just before the half time. And Fulis now with an important, important kick just to take this back to one converted try of the scoreline. line. 18-12 it is. It was 18-0 after 12 minutes. But you've got to say, fair play to Warrington because they were stunned. They were being outplayed, they were being outfought, and they were being outfought. Well, well, so they found a way back. Well, they looked like they were setting up for the kick to the right-hand side. You've just seen that. All those blue shirts going towards the sticks. But George Williams, he's that good. He recognises that there's maybe a switch off on Catalan's right-hand side. There's nothing on. So what does he do? He comes back, he throws the ball over to Ashton, who tips it back inside to King and it's about playing rugby and not panicking just reading the situations let everything unfold in front of you and that's what they've done they've managed to get themselves back in the game now good kickoff well taken by Hayes it, it, it's a half of two halves isn't it it is as they came out of the blocks they started really really strongly Catalan do you know what you expected them to as well 
like we said at the start, no Nicarima, no Fies, no more. But they forced an error here. They forced an error. They certainly hit. They've got line speed. They've got a bit of spark in defence. They've tried to front load that and force an error. And now Warrington, well, they've got to come up with all the right answers here now. Because I'm sure that Jordan Abdul's going to be trying to get his hands on the ball as much as possible. You just get those numbers in and McMeekin and, and Sate over the top. Just force that ball out. Just what they didn't want. Just what Catalan did want. What an important stage of the game as we go into the last five minutes. The chance again for Catalan. Romano. And Romano's got Tom. And Warrington celebrating there. Dusty as if they scored a try to level the game. That was the first tackle. First attack on the Warrington line for a good 10 minutes. And Romano comes up with the error. Yeah, they've been really disappointed as well. On it. You could see Rougier just hanging behind the scrum, trying to play a bit of cat and mouse with the defence, which side he was going to go. As soon as he goes to the left-hand side, Warrington switched on. They knew they had to come up and defend that player well. Romano, just as he's going down, tries to spin out a Dufty's tackle, loses possession. And that's an opportunity going to miss. Ty looks for Fulis. He's trying to go on the outside, had to cut back in, Josh Fulis. He's been in good form as well. Hat trick against London in their last Super Bowl. Oh. That was a big hit. Chris Satter Chris didn't Satter miss that, did he? A huge hit on Zane Musgrove. Oh, look at him now. Desiree is getting involved as well. They're flying Walker. off the line. Yeah, Danny Walker thought that that gap was going to open up then because everyone's flying off the line. Looking at who's going to be expecting to get the ball. Get it tasty. Terrific first half. Hayes with a high kick. Rouget under enormous pressure does well. Williams takes it down. For the young fullback who's deputising for both Nicarima and Morg. As I mentioned, Rouget the last couple of weeks has been having a lot of tuition from Sam Tompkins. All that will be good advice, won't it? Yeah, exactly. It's not just about what you do on the field, it's about what you do and where you position your plays in front of you. How you control your emotions at the back. Yeah, just go back and play it again, which they do. He's got good footwork at the line, and not Tom Davis? But we've got a game on. Didn't look as though we would after the first 12 or 15 minutes. Last tackle, still inside their own half. Tisson who puts the, the kick up. Ty will take it, no he won't. But the ball goes backwards, got away with that. Yeah, he's very fortunate that ball goes back. And uh, Matt Dufty was there as well, just loitering with some intent. Tries to make up for it now. Keeps his hands on the ball. Malcolm Fitzgibbon now with it. A big carry just trying to get through those three defenders. It has been bruising, and we always expected it really. Again, Mike McMeekin, he's just taking metres off them with his line speed. Just stopping the momentum going forward from Warrington. Penalty. But Meek penalised for knocking the ball out. Yeah, the back end of the set as well. They'll be disappointed with that. You know, just, just over a minute to go before half-time. You give a penalty away. Warrington are going to get another crack at the line. You can see just a... A poor player, really, from Mike McMeekin, who's a, a very, very good player. But don't give the ball to Warrington here. Especially yeah, with the confidence seconds. that they have. Yeah. To try and get level before half-time. Cracking first half. Hayes and Williams, and here is Ty. Pulsating first 40 minutes. Joe Philbin. Philbin over 200 games for Warrington. Last minute. Satai with the tackle. 
Not the best of passes, but picked up by Dufty. Toby King looking for a way through. Back it goes to Matt Dufty, running across the line. Little kick through there towards the line. Um, it's well recovered from Tom Johnston. We played his hand there, Matt Dufty. Didn't quite come off. He couldn't pull the ace from the pack. Yeah, well, it's good positioning, good urgency, isn't it? From the wingman. And again, just looking to try and get out of trouble there just before the half time. Hooter goes. Warrington went through Danny Walker, just trying to get off the line and just force an error, maybe. But for Catalan now, they'll just get through this set and get to half time. Well, there's no doubt that Catalan will be happy to go in in front. And there is the half-time hooter. It has been a terrific first 40 minutes. Catalan racing into an 18-point lead after 12 minutes. Tries from Tom Davis, Tom Johnson and Ben Garcia. We saw Paul Vaughan, Sinbin, and then Warrington built up ahead of steam. Jordan Abdul was absolutely outstanding for the Dragons. But two tries in six minutes from Zane Musgrove and then from Toby King, and we've got a game on. The prize for the winner, top spot in Super League, and the second half is on the way. At half-time, it's Warrington 12, Catalan 18. Well, Steve McNamara just waiting for his players to come off. I think he's also waiting to have a word with Jack Smith, the referee. They got off to a blistering start, didn't they? The Catalan Dragons going into a lead by 18 points to nil, but they're pinned back at half time. It's Warrington 12, Catalan 18. Cracking first half at the Halliwell Jones. And Warrington right back in it. Catalan leading 18-0 after 12 minutes, but Warrington building up ahead of steam. Musgrove and King with the tries. All that despite losing Paul Vaughan to the sin bin. And that proved costly because there were two tries in that period for the Catalan Dragons. Terrific first half, Terry O'Connor. Yeah, what a start from Steve McNamara's men. The opening 12 minutes, well, they were blistering, weren't they? When they shifted the ball from one side of the field to the other, Jordan Abdul and Tiso thought he did a really good job enabling his winger to get a one-on-one -on -one with Matty Ash and Tom Davis with all the strength that he's got and the footwork and vision that he goes in and he scores the opening try just after four minutes. Three minutes later, his opposite winger wasn't to be outdone. See Michael McClone, he was expecting to get a penalty maybe. Jordan Abdul takes it upon himself to kick the ball to speed. But everything's about competition in sport and you've got to compete for the bouncing the ball. And you could see that he does exactly that, Tom Johnston. Matt Dufty, he's going for it, he thinks he's got it and all of a sudden he pulls it back in with his left hand, goes in for the second try and the seven minutes. And then the Simbin here, Mick Paul Vaughan trying to be physical. He just gets underneath Ruzier, lifts him, puts him in a dangerous position, drops him on a shoulder. All year, that has been 10 minutes in the sim bin. And he goes off. One minute later, Ben Garcia, a simple try, crashing over. They'll be disappointed to concede that. And they know that they are up against a Warrington side. They're playing at home. They'll be disappointed conceding tries close to the line. But as soon as they get near their opponent's line, and Catalan were, were so brave preventing Warrington from scoring a try, but when Musgrove goes over, it's a one-on-one, -on -one and that's all he needs. The impact that he made, as soon as he come off the bench, that's what he was sent on to do. Danny Walker does a decent job. He gets outside of Mike McMeek and spins out the tackle from Tissot and goes in. And then George Williams looks over right, sees that there's nothing on. He addresses what he's going to do, checks the left-hand side, throws the ball over the top to Ashton, Toby King, then gets it on the inside and manages to just make that kick an easier one for Thulis. And they were back in the game and all of a sudden there's a bit more confidence in this Warrington side.
Let's have a look at how it's all panned out in that first 40 minutes. And there you have it. Despite that blistering start from Catalan, Warrington having most of the possession and most of the ball. Yeah, but you look at the missed tackles, though, there from Catalan. 23 missed tackles compared to 11 from Warrington. And all the possession going Warrington's favour. Probably the back end of that half as well. And the penalties conceded five for Catalan. Well, doesn't help them, but Warrington certainly had the, the better at the end of that first half. And a cracking second half on the way without a shadow of a doubt. So the second half is on the way. 18 points to 12 in favour of the Catalan Dragons. Can Warrington continue their comeback? A Warrington win will put them back on top of the Super League table. Six points in it at the Halliwell Jones. Easter weekend, rivals round. And we've seen some games so far. Leeds on the end of a Castleford barrage in the first half, but a crucial win for Rowan Smith's men. Castleford still winless. And then on Good Friday, Hull's wretched run continues. Hull KR very much challenging at the top of the table. An epic derby between Saints and Wigan. Saints winning it late on. Half time here. Catalan by six should be a cracking second 40 minutes still to come on Easter Saturday Salford against Lee and then on Easter Sunday London looking for their first win of the season against the Huddersfield Giants well Catalan got the better of, of Warrington in the opening exchange in this game 12 minutes they were three tries up incredible the way that they were playing edge to edge the wingers both scoring tries in the opening seven minutes and ben garcia goes over for what was a simple try but warrington you give them enough field position with the plays that they've got they'll score some tries and and do some damage themselves and i'm sure that that at half time made the team talk from the coach sam burgess an awful lot better and a lot easier We're confirming that fantastic start for the Catalan Dragons. Davis, Johnston and Garcia scoring. But Warrington hitting back, and I'll tell you what, that will please Sam Burgess no end. Because we thought that they may capitulate after that exceptional start from the Catalan Dragons, but maybe this is a different Warrington side to the one that we've seen in the last couple of years, maybe. Don't forget, they were eight on the spin at the start of last season, and then they collapsed, didn't well, they? Well, I think you've, you've hit the nail on the head, though. I think that this Warrington side now, led by George Williams, is a different beast. You know, they were put through the, the paces, they were put through like, all that hard work in, in the off-season, the team spirit, the, the new coach that came in, in Sam Burgess, just led the way in majority of things that they were doing on all those tough days when you're running up hills and you're doing it really really tough but the belief that they have now Miss Warrington side you never write them off I'll tell you what I know for sure one very interested spectator in this afternoon's proceedings the St Helens coach Paul Wellens no doubt with his feet up with a cup of tea watching this because Saints play against Catalan next saturday huge game in the south of france then of course they line up against warrington the week after don't they in the quarterfinals of the challenge cup so we're underway in the second half is it going to be another warrington win and a fantastic fight back or can the catalan dragons make it three wins on the spin at the halliwell jones well i'm sure that catalan now will just want to knock off maybe the first five sets of six here don't want to make a mistake which then has led to when they were making mistakes they were it led to ill discipline they were missing tackles they were falling away at the back end of that that first half they just want to make sure that they have the same focus as they had at the start of the game a nice defense from warrington 
Well, getting the numbers in, making the, the rook as slow as possible. Danny Walker doing a, a decent job on Tarek Sims. McLaurin. Last one, though. Still 15 yards inside their own half. Abdul downfield and good football skills from Matt Dufty. Warrington just wanted to take off where they left off. Well, I'm sure that both of these teams now will, will just be feeling each other out. Do you know, you've come back onto the field, the coaches have told you exactly what they want, Steve McNamara for Catalan and Sam Burgess for Warrington. Good carries like that. That's what Sam Burgess will be saying. Turn up, run as hard as you can onto the ball, let your halves play on the back of that. And Jordy Crowther now with a nice meters after contact as well. Yes. It was Philbin with the first run, Crowther with the second. Warrington on the front foot again, I wonder. Dufty for Toby King, the try scorer. King now for Philbin. Philbin with an opportunity, cuts inside. Last tackle. 20 yards away from the try line and Williams launches it high towards that far side it was well taken by Tom Johnston just about under pressure there from Hayes and Fewless stays in play but this is another positive start isn't it to Warrington now just as I say that interference at the play the ball and a hugely relieving penalty well, that, that's where you want to turn the ball over it was a good kick from Williams into the corner they dealt with the first play the second play they got off the line really quick it was just a bit too much for the referee from young Leon Hayes just ha hanging around a bit too much in the rut to get the penalty probably gifted 15 20 meters to Catalan gets themselves out of a bit of trouble To back penalties. Yeah. Adam Allroyd, six game in a row in the, in the back row, he puts his hands on the ball. The first one, Young Hayes, second one off Adam Allroyd. Both of those, they've got big futures in the game, trying to be dominant, but trying to slow the, the play of the ball down. And maybe that was a key focus from what the coach said, Sam Burgess, at half time, slow the rook down and two of the younger players making the mistake of giving those penalties away. Well, from nowhere, the Dragons were on their own try line, and now they're attacking the Warrington line. Here is Tariq Sims. Great chance here to strike first in the second half. Desiree. McClorum again. Abdul. Abdul out of the back door, inside it goes for Mike McMeekin. Right in front Help. of the post. Release, ball! McLaurin again. McLaurin goes on his own! Is McLaurin managed to get the ball down? Mickey McLaurin, is this a key moment in this match? Has McLaurin scored? The video referee, Chris Kendall, is going to adjudicate here. Jack Smith, the referee on the field, is saying no try. Chris Kendall will be the ultimate adjudicator. OK, tackle four, we've got a live call of no try. Michael McAlorum is in possession of the ball. It always appears to be up on that angle. Go to the reverse. Long in possession. Again, it looks like it's always up at that. Okay, it's always up and he always maintains possession. Thank you, I've made my decision. Wow. What an amazing tackle that is from young Adam Holroyd. Brilliant. Saved a certain try. Last one then. Warrington still with some defending to do. Abdul chipped it towards the corner. Johnson bats the ball back. Opportunity for Rouget. And has he managed to score here, Cesar Rouget? He thinks he has. 
He thinks he's given Catalan a crucial score at the start of the second half. Try given on the field. And another decision for our video ref, Chris Kendall, to make. OK, it's tackle five. Got a live call of try. Pause the ball on the foot. OK, everyone to the left is onside. We've got McAlorum to the right, who is offside. But he's going to be outside the 10. OK, so we'll go to the corner view now. He's, in, he's up in the air. Make sure he jumps from the field of play. Jumps from inside the field of play. He's in the air. Knocks the ball backwards. Okay, we're going to the grounding now. We've got a live call of try. We've got a live call of try. He's in possession. He's in possession, and the ball, the ball gets to the ground. I just want to make sure he maintains possession. It just goes a little bit. Yeah, this will be the one. He's in possession of the ball and grounds the ball. Thank you, I've made my decision. Well, what a dramatic 60 seconds and a crucial 60 seconds in this game because it's a try for Cesar Rouget. Just a few moments after McLaurin was denied by a brilliant tackle from Adam Holroyd. That was class from Tom Johnston, and Rouget took it superbly. Well, they'd be really disappointed, won't they? Warrington, Jordan Abdul again, kicks the ball up. Tom Johnston just taps the ball back in size. Rouget's there to get hold of it and get over the line. Like you said, Adam Allroy did all the hard work previously to deny Michael McClaurin underneath the sticks. The next play, they go over to the left-hand side. It's the boot from Abdul, this man that caused the damage. And now can he cause a bit more damage? Three from three today, can he make it four from four? Well, we always thought the first score of the second half would be crucial. But Warrington, with the masters of their own downfall, giving away two consecutive penalties. And Abdul, with another fantastic kick off the touchline. And it is four out of four. And it's 24 points to 12 in favour of the Catalan Dragons. Well, Jordan Abdul, full of confidence, Sam Burgess and Richard Marshall will be disappointed, really. They thought that they got out of jail, like I said, with that great tackle from Adam Allroyd underneath the sticks. But then to concede on the next play, they'll be so disappointed. And now 12 points behind on the scoreboard, they need to start and stay focused like they were at the back end of that first half. Tries in three consecutive games now for Cesar Rouget, deputising third choice fullback. Oh my, he took that well. And Warrington had started the second half so positively, but then back to back penalties and it, it completely changed the complexion of the game again. Well, they're only six minutes. There won't, there won't be any panic yet from Warrington. They won't overplay the hand. They know they've got to deal with the likes of. Mike McMeek and Chris Satai and some of the bigger fellas because Jordan Abdul, if he has all that that field position, he'll do some damage and, and Danny Walker just getting off his line and trying to get him oh, a great, great offload. Load. It was from Satai. Well, he's a big man, he's hard to handle. And he gets his arm free and that's why he's so dangerous. On the last, Abdul kicks the ball through and uh, Rouget there claiming he may well have been obstructed off the ball but an important defensive set and played quickly. Here is Hayes. The offload. Ashton well tackled. Now Toby King. And some of the Warrington players now are sucking in the big ones. They've been under a bit of pressure. No, it's it's only seven minutes into the, the second half. But they're very physical. They're dominant. And every time that Warrington players get the ball, they're trying to turn them on the back. Williams now, quick hands, was that a knock-on? It was! Well, the referee is stopping play, is that a knock-on or did it come off the Catalan hand? Big decision here. Can't play, I want it to stop. Scrum, there, Bob. 
Before it's brought Scrum back in. down. Yeah, he called the knock on, and that's middle. why he's brought them back. And the Catalan just asking you why he didn't play on. But the call came immediately. Yeah, the to call be fair. was immediate, so, so the Warrington players would have switched off, listened to them. And you can see good contact from Romano. Adam Allroyd, at least saying that the ball's been stripped from him. The call was made from the referee, Jack Smith. Six, Mickey. One, two, three. About six and a half. You know, he doesn't get the plaudits, Romano, for me, but he's got really good footwork at the line. Very strong defensively. And really does give him so much coming out of trouble with his quick play, the balls. I preferred to Mattia Laguerre as well in the centres. Interesting what you were saying before about the size of the Catalan pack and the squad in general. Talk to Steve McNamara yesterday, Alric De Costa, who probably eight to nine times out of ten would be on the bench as the backup hooker, has been left out today so he can make the bench a big bench. Seguier, Sirinin, Satai and Desiree. Well, if you ever need to change him, yeah. if you ever need to change him, McLaurin would probably go off and Ben Garcia exactly. fill in at hooker. Yeah. But it's a big bench. Is it going to be a big win for Catalan here? Tie. Great tackle on Rouget there. Still two left in the set. Abdul goes to short side. Little slip pass. And to Johnston. Can he scramble over and score? Brilliant hands on the far side there. Tom Johnston gets the ball down. And it was Abdul quick hands. And on it went to Tom Johnston. He stumbled. He got up. He stumbled again. And he scored. That's a big, big try as Catalan scored twice in the space of five minutes. Well, it seems to be exactly this unfolding the same as it did in the in the first half. Those quick fire tries go down the short side. Jordan Abdul, yeah, nice little flick that. pass out yeah, wide that. to Romano. Romano in turn just finds Tom Johnston who's hugging the, the touchline. Nice play, nice tackle, coming in nearly, and good offload, and you can see them go in, Tom Johnston goes in. And you know what, that'll just take the wind out of the sails, Morrington. All came, all came for the mistake, Holroyd nice. dropped the ball, and it seems that every time Warrington come up with an error or give away a penalty. Look, do you know what, I think the reason, like, Catalan are so good, the stability that they've got within the, within the club, the, the chairman, the Bernard Guash, spends an awful lot of money. But Steve McNamara will celebrate his seventh anniversary in June. He's been the head coach, you know, in the south of France. And I think he's done a tremendous job. You were, you were talking in the first half about players leaving and maybe going to other clubs come next year. But all that he's done in his time as coach of Catalan is keep on bringing players in and making them better and better each year. Absolutely. Yeah. New contract of 2026, Steve McNamara. Desperately wants to deliver the Super League crown after two near misses. Abdul off the touchline. That's his first failure with the boot this afternoon. But 28 points to 12. And just to make the point that you were talking about Romano, and it was Romano's super skills there, which set up the try for Tom Johnson. Yeah, like I said, he's a good player. He doesn't get the, the plaudits. I think he's pretty strong. He gets the ball away. Get rid of a couple of tackles. They brought Warrington now brought Sam Powell onto the field. Very good defender, maybe spelling Danny Walker, maybe bringing him back on the back end of the game just to try and quicken that up around the run, having two running nines on the field in Sam Powell and Danny Walker. But first and foremost for them, they've got to deal with what's in front of them. Well, Warrington fought back from 18 0 down in the first half. Here is Satai again. Satai, oh, and he makes the mistake, and he did so well. There's an injury in back play as yeah, well. Yeah, it's Joe Philbin, he gets his head in the wrong place. I think it's Chris, Sat Chris Satay that had the ball, he picked him straight out, he run at him, and Joe Philbin just put his head in the, the wrong place instead of hitting him with his right shoulder. I think he tried to hit with his left shoulder, and the size of the man, the destruction that he causes every time that he carries the ball, and Joe Philbin, let me tell you, he's a, he's a good player, he's a big defender. He's so powerful on this, he comes off second best. You can see, look, he just gets, tries to hit him with the left shoulder. Should have been a right shoulder tackle. Unfortunately, gets his head right in front of that man. 
and then leaves the other Warrington players, Jordy Crowther, who was left on the floor, trying to deal with it. He's just so powerful, Chris Sartai. A really good pick-up for the, the French side. <laughs> Makes your point again about the way that, that McNamara revolves this squad. And, and it evolves and it does get better and you know they, they lose players but they bring players in there's the story is that as many as six catalan players of their first team squad could be on their way out you can be sure that mcnamara has already identified well, the six say, i was going to say that means that six new players are coming in yeah well they were 18 nil down got back to within six at half time they're now 28 12 down Ball, Phil away from the ball. off the field for a head injury assessment oh, test here is Powell now and Curry good play Williams trying to find a way through brilliant tackle from Romano keeps him out Powell again Harrison target for the line and Harrison gets the ball down that's a terrific try from James Harrison power powering onto the ball power on the line and powering the ball down. Chris Kendall will decide, but for me, Warrington are back in it through James Harrison. OK, we've got a live call of try. We're checking the grounding. Harrison is in possession at this point and then reaches out. Is there any separation? I'll try and go off a different camera. OK, that camera's not going to show me much. Trying to see if there is any ever any separation. Okay, at that point the ball's on the ground. Okay, I've, I've got a live call of try. I have insufficient evidence to say that the ball comes away from the hand. Thank you, I've made my decision. James Harrison with a crucial try in this game and we were just talking about the fact that they, they got back to within six and they're trying to get back now. And that will do for starters. James Harrison, ever present this season, son of former Great Britain star, top guy as well, Carl Harrison. And his son signed the contract to the end of 2026. He'll play a big part in Warrington's future. But for the present, Warrington are now back within 10. Yeah, he's a workaholic, isn't he? He just turns up for Sam Paul. Hits a really good line. Sam Paul gets McClorum interested. He gets the ball down over the line. He said, very good player. James Harrison spent a lot of his career down in the championship, given an opportunity at Warrington, and boy, has he took his chance. Yeah, absolutely. And identified, to be fair, by Daryl Powell as the former Warrington coach as being one who will go to the very top. And that's been recognised by the club here at Warrington. Still only 13 minutes gone in the second half. 28-18 and still plenty of time for Warrington to get back into this. It's thoroughly enjoyable, Terry. It's been outstanding. It's everything that you want, isn't it? From near the top of the table, clash. Matt Dufty just gets his hands on the ball. Late on in the tackle count, looking for some space. Can't quite get through. Outside, Jordan! Hayes with the kick. Davis with the take. Coming up for 55 minutes gone at the Halliwell Jones. Off the ball, James! Go on. Next weekend, it's a trip to Headingley. Tough test against Leeds for Sam Burgess and Warrington. Well, Catalan at home to St Helens on Saturday evening. What a game that will be. Yeah, that's good hunting from Warrington. Well, Lots to shift the ball. Tissot going back against the grain, looking to the middle of the field. Tissot, who's done well, drafted at the last minute, Hugo Tissot after Theo Farge pulled out to the side. Oh, ben Garcia 
played just inside the Warrington half on the last. And here's the dangerous Abdul again. Little chip forward, and that was well taken. But every time Abdul has the ball, you expect something to happen. Yeah, he's been so dangerous, hasn't he? Jordan Abdul is attacking kick specialist. Going to give a, a penalty here as it play on. I think he's having a word with Matt Dusty, saying that Dusty was holding on to Cesar Rouge and just to get on with it. He's dealt with the game well, hasn't he, Jack Smith? That's a high shot. He doesn't miss that one. High shot by Young Tisov. Yeah. The shake of the head. It's just about a bit of speed and footwork, isn't it? Yeah. Nothing in it. Penalty only. Is it Fulis? He's so brave. Josh Fulis, throwing him skirts across the line. He's trying to entice one of those defenders to jump the line. But he's on good there. Gives the penalty away. Again, it'll be some valuable field position. It was the undoing of them, the back end of that first half, Catalan, with the penalties that they gave away. And 25 minutes to go in this thrilling encounter as well. Of, of Sam Powell will count for something. Hayes gets the ball out now. That I think it did come off a Catalan hand. Yeah, Zika Balu come out of line, didn't he? Yeah. Again, he could just see George Williams and Matt Dufty. He was just hanging around, loitering in the middle of the field. As soon as he saw them fanning out to the left hand side, he knew that he had to come in and make that play defensively, close it down, because they had numbers out wide. Sam Powell's just having a bit of zip, isn't it? Seems strange to see him in a Warrington shirt after 12, 13 years of Wigan, just as it's odd to see Daryl Clark in a St. Helens shirt after all the time he spent here at Warrington. Here's Crowder. He's looking for a way through. And they like the look of this left hand side, Warrington, Williams, and, and Dufty. Leon Hayes, brave there, taking off Mike McMeek. And oh, brilliant from Williams! Absolutely brilliant from the England captain! What a try! That's what he can do! A magic moment for George Williams, and it game on in the Halliwell Jones. Wow, individual brilliance. Yeah, well, class, isn't he? He might have missed four games this year, but his mind's still up to the, the tempo of the rugby league, and he's done his own mate there, Michael McLaurin, and he knows that he's a, an aggressive defender. He comes off the line, there's just a bit too much of a gap that he'll see, and he knows exactly what he's doing. He holds the ball in two hands, he's always going to pass the ball, and he fakes it, steps off that left foot, what he's renowned for in the game, George Williams. And as soon as he steps off the foot, the acceleration is there, and he beats everybody. McLaurin, Rougier goes in. Well, that's got the crowd going. Josh Fulis makes no mistake, and Warrington are now as close as they have been all game. 18 0 down, 28 12 down, it's down 28 24. I say it all the time, you just play what's in front of you. They said that that gap was too big between the markers and Michael McLaurin. And he knew it. He knew exactly what he had to do. Played with McLaurin, knows he's aggressive in defence. Catalan now just taking the time to just come back now. Knowing that there's just four points in this game, 20 minutes to go. And to revalue what they're doing. They've got to get a grip of this game. Steve McNamara will be sending down the messages, what he wants, what he's seen from his side. In the last 10 minutes, but well, what he's seen from Warrington is some of the bigger players now starting to step up and take control. Well, tell you what, tell you, whatever happens, whatever the end result is, we have seen evidence here of what Warrington have made of in 2024, win or lose. They have really up 
the ante and given it some, haven't they, against the Catalan Dragons after twice seemingly been beyond repair, if you like. Well, I said the, the game that they've won it on round four at Hull KR, they would never have won that years gone by. I think that this is a, a different Warrington side. Well, you can have all the you can have the best team on a team sheet, but you've got to perform when you go out there and play. And what Warrington you've, you've seen, you've seen a resilient Warrington side this year. And again, just the, the opportunity to blood some of these youngsters bodes well for them in the future. Everybody's game now. Approaching the hour mark. Good play again. He's had a good game, hasn't he? Cesar Rouget. Goal three. Harrison with the tackle. Rouget back on. Last one. Again, they go the short side and it's Abdul. It's an easy take this time for Matt Dusty. First, you know, I know we've got 20 minutes left in this game, and I think this is a big 10 minutes for Warrington. What will they do? And Catalan will just try and slow the game down as much as possible. Warrington will try and speed it up. And Sam Paul, as he goes behind the ruck there, he's already directing his play as what he wants. Curry! Williams uh, showed his stark quality in one little sidestep. Warrington bang back in this now. Here's Jordy Crowther. Last main square! Into the last quarter. Last tackle. Hayes goes high. Taken well again by Rouget. Good chase by Toby King. There's a bit more sting in the tackles as well. Now, Jordy Crowther just stopping Tom Davis. Dead. They're looking for the offload. Dangerous, it dangerous. It was a Davis offload. I think it was Ikevalu. It was it was. wasn't it? Was it not Ikevalu? Well, they gifted Warrington already with their tails up. A chance here. Ball out to Hayes. Hayes now looking for Fitzgibbon. King stopped just short. Incredible drama. Easter Saturday at the Halliwell Jones. Crowther again, right in front of the post. 12 yards out. Power. Hayes again, and Williams taps it on, but not the best pass. And Fulis, it goes forward. And they made. A terrible mess of that, Warrington. All of a sudden, they were gifted the opportunity, but it was a poor pass from George Williams. Relief for Catalan. Do you know it was aggressive defence from Catalan that forces the edit. Jordan Abdul gets off the line and he puts pressure, gets in the eye line of George Williams, who just tries to, to flick the ball on. Obviously, the first mistake is made by Warrington. They get all of the ball there. Catalan Foolish just couldn't tear that ball in. But like, it was aggressive defence, like I said. If that, if he doesn't get in the eye line, make that tackle, or force the error, Jordan Abdul, I think Warrington score that. It's going to be a cracking finish from Weber, isn't it? We all stand it. We always expected it all, didn't we? Both sides not giving an inch. They'll be disappointed, Warrington, with the way that they started the game. But you've got to credit Catalan with the, the intent that they came over. Like you said, they, they turned up on Friday morning. They watched the, the Good Friday games. So they were well and truly versed on what to expect. For Samo now! Quicker, Sam! She saw it inside for Mike McMeeker. Another of the Catalan players rumoured to be going elsewhere in 2025. Abdul, that's a good cheesy kick towards the corner. Picked up in the end by Romano. There's a knock on. 
Warrington get the ball back from 10 yards from their own try line. 16 minutes to go. Catalan in front, but now by only four points. Well, you can see the kick into the corner to feel this. You can see the long shadows. When he goes up for that ball, the sun's in his eyes. He did a remarkable job, really. Warrington get possession here. Paul Vaughan just trying to, to bring the ball away. The forwards will be doing some work here now. Protocols. Chance here to get Rouget into terms that Warrington are using their 18th man. Matthew Nicholson is on the field. Number 13. Um, that's how the 18th man works if you suffer two injuries. Yeah. Yeah, HIA exactly. injuries. You can use that 18th man. Yeah. Yeah. You're allowed to use the 18th man. Originally it was Stefan Raxford. Uh, but they changed it before kickoff. So Matty Nicholson on. Oh, Warrington utilising the 18th man protocol. Great run. Paul Seguia on for the Catalan Dragons. Midway inside the Warrington half. Less than 15 minutes to go. Abdul again will hoist it into the bright sunshine on that far side. But a, an easy take there for, for Josh Thewlis. What we thought about offloading. Well, there's no panic for me. He didn't have to jump in the air then to catch that ball. He knew that he had a bit of time just to keep his, his feet planted and just wait for the ball to come in his hands. Like I said, that'll be the, the sort of zone area where they're going to be kicking that ball from Jordan Abdul. Especially because he does play over on the left. That's a good shot. Yeah, getting involved. Here is Hayes now. Williams sidestep not fooling Mike McMeekin it's given at dummy half Hayes once more here is Dufty always dangerous with ball in hand good tackle again from Arthur Romano Romano has been exceptional Hayes goes high again and it bounces awkwardly for Rouget but Takes it on the second bounce. Catalan have the ball back. He was going everywhere in the air, that ball. Leon Hayes, that's one of his strengths, that is kicking game. He might not be the biggest, but he's got a he's got a really long kicking game. Off the ball, Adam! All right. Go to. Now we mentioned two players failing head injury assessments. Philbin and Musgrove. Joe oh, Philbin. Zane Musgrove both failing HIAs and that's why they're allowed to use the 18th man and that's why Matthew Nicholson's on. Yeah, they'll be disappointed as well. They take on Leeds next week. So to lose those two players will certainly be a big loss, both of those big powerful players for them. So Musgrove scored a try. Dusty under a tower from um, takes it well, Matt Dusty. Well, his acceleration is one of the, the quickest in the sport, isn't he? He's not the biggest, but... So on this run... But, I mean, just... just Hold this now. To exemplify that, Warrington have recognised how crucial Duffy is. They've just signed him, haven't they, to a, a new contract. He's tied, tied down to the club till the end of 2026, at least, now, Matt Duffy. Building for the future. Eleven minutes to go. Williams with the offload. Dusty with the offload. Here is Ty. Roderick Ty down that far side. Last tackle. Ball goes back to young Leon Hayes. Again, that's a, a decent kick, but it's well read by, by Davis. Just diffusing the situation, Tom Davis. We're going to have a thrilling last 10 minutes. Yeah, and Warrington now have got to do it with the players on the field. They've used all the substitutions now. Warrington. 
So for the next 11 minutes, they've got to get through and do the job, not looking to the sidelines. So some of these bigger fellas might be worked over by Catalan. On the halfway. Led 18 mil. Led 28-12. But it's a four-point ball game going into the last ten minutes. Here is Tiso. McMeekin brought down. Abdul again. A little chip towards the corner by Jordan Abdul. Johnston. Well, he manages to come up with the ball, but Dusty and Fulis read it well. And he's bundled into touch Tom Johnston, who, of course, is on a hat-trick. That was good defensive play. Well, it just seems groundhog day, doesn't it? You know, they go over to that left side. It comes off the boot of Abdul, challenging Thulis. Johnson comes over it, but he's met by some strong defence. And now Catalan, now in turn, just want to try and restrict some metres here from Warrington. He'll just try and get as far upfield as possible before Williams or Hayes kicks the ball. Stay responsive, Ben. Third, don't go in. Paul said, yeah, Paul! Paul! Release, Jordan! Good play again. Williams here for Ashton, looks for a way through. Nicavalu with a cracking tackle. Nicavalu goes low, Davis goes high. Last one, Williams under pressure from Tom Davis. Gets the kick away. And bounces once, taken right on his own line by uh, Cesar Rouget. Good chase. Do you know it does take the lucky bounce, doesn't it? Could have gone anywhere. It goes up, it's straight up in the earth, about 15 foot, which enables Warrington then to get down near the line. You can just see now Ikevalu tries to, to just make some inroads and get down and play the ball as quick as possible. Some of the Catalan players now struggling with cramp the pace of this game. That's a big run, That's big run for Mike McMeekin. Yeah, McMeekin with a good run. No markers, play on. Tackle Last tackle, McLaurin goes left to Abdul again, this time drills it towards the sidelines. Dusty there to cover, to shy of his own try line. The clock is ticking, a little over eight minutes to go, Catalan leading by just four points. Yeah, it's going to be who's going to hold the nerve. Yeah, said about how quick the game had been now. Energy sapper it's been. Tom Johnson was just down, just stretching off his calves, just cramps setting in to them. Three. Ben Garcia you're out. And Warrington now. Leon Hayes wants to play here. He wants to come left. Fitzgibbon with a little sidestep. Still going, Fitzgibbon. What a chance here now. Chased by Davis. Lost of Fitzgibbon, but there was no one in support. Blockbusting run from the Australian. Hayes now and Curry is the space on that far side. Dusty, ball goes out to Fulis, cuts inside, stop right on the line. Josh Fulis, desperate defending from Catalan. Ball goes backwards under pressure. Dusty picks it up. High hanging kick from Dusty, and it's taken in the end by uh, Davis, but he's held back. Push behind his own line. This is fantastic. Pulsating Super League action on Easter Saturday, and we are going the distance. Seven minutes to go. Warrington 24, Catalan 28. Oh, outstanding work from both sides. Lachlan Fitzgibbon gets through the line. He doesn't panic. He knows that he's still got tackles in the back. And all of a sudden, you can see Sam Burgess on his feet with Martin Gleeson. Catalan did a remarkable job over in the left-hand corner to prevent them from scoring a try. But they've got another set of six now they've got to deal with. Well, again, Jordan Abdul taking the shot clock down to just one second before getting the kick away. Here's Paul Vaughan. Six and a half minutes for Warrington to complete what would be a remarkable comeback and secure a win which would take them back to the top of the Super League table. Powell and Hayes again. Here is Vaughan, wrapped up by Sikia. 
and by Tucson, they're 15 yards away from the line. Powell, Curry, Williams, Dusty there. Did the ball go backwards? It did go backwards, said the referee. Hayes picks it up, and it's six to go. It came off a Catalan hand, a full set now, 10 yards away from the line. Terrific drama right at the end here. Powell, close for Vaughan. Vaughan charges towards the line. Inches short. Powell once more. Well, that was dropped by Curry. The ball went backwards. Fortune favouring Warrington. Still three tackles left in the bank. Williams with an inside step again. Williams goes for the line. Dragged down by Rouget. Powell now. They come left for Hayes. Hayes with a long pass. And it came off a Catalan hand, did it? And I think it's going to be first knock on. And it's going to be another set for Warrington on that Catalan line. Less than five minutes wow. to go. Where's your 10th team? Wow, wow, wow. Matty Cavallo. Well, he makes a play for it. It doesn't come off. They've got another set. And you can just sense it. That there's a Warrington try coming here now. All the big players have just got their hands up, directing everyone what they want. George Williams and Matt Duffy are so influential here, along with Leon Hayes. And listen to that crowd now. I'll tell you what, if Vicky Valu have got a hand on it, it was a try for Toby King. Ball's in, ball's in, out! Ball's out. Hayes, they go to the right-hand side. Williams, Williams jigging and jagging through. And another sidestep just dropped his shoulder right in front of the post. Brought down by Navarrete. Powell now. Desperate Catalan defending. They led 18-0 after 12 minutes. They led 28-12, 10 minutes into the second half. Powell. And Williams. Hayes. Gets out of one, gets out of two. Brought down by Garcia and McMeekin. Powell again. Curry. Is the space on that far side? Now there is with Curry. Curry for Fulis. He's forced to cut back inside Josh Fulis. Still two tackles left in this set for the Warrington Wolves. A try to level it. A try and a goal to probably win it. Dusty! Long pass out for Ashton. Ashton cut back inside. Ashton goes for the line. What a tackle from Seguier. Williams on the last, pushes it forward. I mean, offside. Warrington are offside. Brilliant defending. Well, I think he was actually tackled in yeah. the air. That's the penalty in the end. But Catalan has survived four sets wow. on their own line. Wow. Do you know, defence is all about attitude. Whether you want to do it or you don't. Romano, when he catches that ball, the ref is in the right position. Look, he's taken out. They get the penalty, a relieving penalty. They said four sets on the line. Had to deal with. And they answered all the questions then. Because Warrington were getting excited when they had the ball. And what? Just under three minutes to go. Wow. Well, at some stage, Terry's got to choose a player of the match. But I can't ask Pick you to it choose it yet, yeah, because we don't know what's yeah. going to happen. Pick it out of the bag. There's been so many good plays for both sides. Really difficult to call this. What a fabulous five minutes of play. What a fabulous watch that was. That was rugby league football at its very best with Warrington banging down the draw, the door, I should say, and Catalan holding firm, defending four sets on their own line. Just over two minutes to go. Warrington's valiant attempt at a comeback looks to be over. They're probably going to get the ball, get their hands on the ball one more time, but they're going to do it from deep inside their own half. They have given it their everything. Last tackle. Less than two minutes. Abdul chipped it towards the corner. And it was knocked on, was it? Or was it ball back and has Abdul scored? Well, did that come off Johnston? Or has Jordan Abdul won it?
for Catalan in the very last minute. The try is given by Jack Smith off the field. Catalan is celebrating as Abdul you know, I think it's a try this. I think this is a try. Well, we shall see. Chris Kendall will deliver the verdict. OK, tackle five. We've got a live call of try. We're checking onside, offside. Pause the ball on the foot. Everyone to the left is onside. We've got McAlorum to the right, who is offside. So let's see what involvement he has. OK, pause the ball on the challenge. He is outside of the 10 metres. So we'll go to the challenge now. The live call on field is that the ball is knocked backwards by Catalan. OK, it's going to be PAF in relation to the ground. Just need to make sure it's not knocked into the Warrington player by Catalan. Okay, we're going to go back to the first shot. Okay, the live call is that the ball's been knocked back. I have insufficient evidence to overturn that, so we're going to go to the ground. And And the ball is grounded. Thank you, I've made my decision. Right at the end, Jordan Abdul, who has been absolutely outstanding for the Catalan Dragons, gets the try that will surely win this game for Catalan and make it three straight wins here at the Halliwell Jones Stadium. The call was, did the ball was it not backwards by Tom Johnson or was it not into the Warrington defender? In case, in that case, it would have been forward, but there wasn't enough evidence to overturn the on-field decision and Abdul has won it for the Dragons. Yeah, well, that yeah. is kicking game in the second half. Every time he's got to a kick, he's kicked it into the same corner. Like I said, young Josh Fulis had to contend with not only the Catalan players, but the sun in his eyes as well. The ball goes backwards. Jordan Abdul is the following up his kick they get the try the winning try i'm gonna go back probably eight minutes ten minutes when catalan were under the pump on the line they had four sets of six that they had to defend in the corner you thought that young josh foolish was going to get in for the try but there's about four to five players that turned up and they get this win on the back of some strong defense in the last eight minutes and i think jordan abdul's just make your decision a lot easier for player of the match terry his, his kicking game has been brilliant Steve McNamara will be really happy. He was offered him at the beginning of the year. He left Hull KR. He looks pretty settled down in the south of France. And Steve McNamara knew exactly what he was going to get when he signed Jordan Abdul. I always go back to probably 10, 15 years ago when Richard Orn talked about him, said probably one of the best kickers of the ball he's ever seen in his whole career. Big call that. Abdul is the back Fred player of the match. He may well have missed with the last kick, but that, I suspect, will be that. 32 points to 24. Catalan have withstood an onslaught. Steve McNamara knows he's won. They've made it five out of six. It's a second defeat of the season for Warrington, and both have come against the Catalan Dragons. But again, what I will say, look, you're up against a team that was in the grand final last year. You're a Warrington side that's got a new coach, that's blood in a lot of young players. There's still some good signs from this Warrington side. They've been beaten by a really good side here in Catalan. And there is the Hooter. A famous win for the Catalan Dragons. A brilliant game on what's been an outstanding rivals round over Easter weekend so far. It's the Catalan Dragons who win by 32 points to 24. They led 18-0, they were pegged back to 18-12 at half-time. They led 28-12 after 50 minutes and were pegged back to 28-24. And then some incredible goal-line defence when they kept out four consecutive sets on their own try line. And then Jordan Abdul's try right at the end, absolutely crucial. Great entertainment, and it means that Catalan go level with St Helens at the top of the Super League table on 10 points.
Warrington gave it their all. But the final score here at the Halliwell Jones, incredible game. Warrington 24, Catalan 32. Well, we'll be back after the break with the story of this game, an analysis of the second half. Warrington came so close to an incredible fight back, but it's Catalan who take the spoils. Brilliant game here at the Halliwell Jones. Four huge games in the Premier League coming up over the weekend. Tonight, Aston Villa against Wolves, followed by Brentford against Man United on Sky Sports Premier League. And then Super Sunday, what a Super Sunday it is in the chase for the Premier League title. Liverpool at home to Brighton, followed by one of the games of the season as Manchester City hosts Arsenal again. Both games on Sky Sports Premier League. Well, just to remind you what happened here at the Halliwell Jones, Warrington nearly completed a terrific comeback. They were 18-0 down and 28-12 down, uh, but Catalan Dragons with some epic defence on their own line, and then a match-winning try right at the end from Jordan Abdul, and Catalans make it five wins out of six, and Jordan Abdul is our Betfred player of the match. That was some game, Jordan. <laughs> Crazy game, to be honest. I was just speaking to George Williams at the end there, and you know, it was one of them where one team was totally dominant for the first 20 minutes of each half, and then the other team came back into it. But, you know, in games like that, you always feel better coming away with a win than you do with a loss. So, you know, the feeling's pretty good now, and I'm sure that we'll learn a few things from the stuff that we didn't necessarily do too well at the back end of both halves. But to lead 18-0 to lead and then to lead 28-12, and they really came at you, but just before you scored, there was a spell there. Uh, when they had the ball on the Catalan line, I think for four straight sets, and in the end, it, it was that defensive effort that that won the game. 100%, and that's something that you know Steve Prads' his team on. We we were talking at the beginning of the week. Um, we look at how many play the balls it takes, you know, each team in the competition to score inside your own 20, and we were sitting at top of that, and you know it paid dividends right at the back end there, and then you know I think we defended two or three sets in a row, and then we put one straight back on them to win the game right at the end. So. You know, we do a lot of things good with the ball, but it's our pride with defending our trial land that got us, you know, the win in the end. It's fair to say that that, that leaving Hull uh, and moving to Catalan and uh, sort of a new lifestyle, new team, fresh start has, has done you the world of good, Jordan. Oh, 100 percent. I'm, um, yeah, I'm really grateful for the opportunity, you know, to play for a different club in a different country with a complete, you know, different lifestyle and culture, and it's brought. You know, a bit more passion, you know, back into the game, which has probably been missing for the last few years due to, you know, injuries and just being in the same place for a long time. But, you know, I'm just forever grateful to Catalans for giving me this opportunity and hopefully I'm paying back, you know, the efforts that they made in the uh, back end of pre-season to get me over. Well done, Jordan. Great performance, great win. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Well, confirming... This is how the Super League table looks. St. Helens, Catalan, Warrington. Saints still top on points difference. And of course, next Saturday, live on Sky Sports, Catalan Dragons against St. Helens. I think we're all ready, all of us looking forward to that. Uh, and I'm sure that the Catalan coach, Steve McNamara, will when he gets his, his breath back. That could be a, a key win come the end of the season, Steve. Yeah, really, really happy. Uh, you know, we were only six days ago at Halifax to get back to France, get back across here, a little bit of disruption you know, on the day of the game with Theo Farge pulling out. So uh, I, thought we were, I thought we were really dominant. Both starts of both halves, lost momentum in the game, nearly cost us, but uh, finished really, really well. I think it was. Uh, I think at the end of the day, I was just talking to, to Jordan Abdul that the that the defensive set uh, in the last five minutes won the game. I mean, they threw everything with four consecutive sets, yeah. and uh, that was the difference. 
I guess, yeah. between winning and losing, Steve. Yeah, it was. It was in the, at the end. I, I was disappointed with the tries. We did concede. I thought there was a couple of really soft tries in there from us. Um, but uh, apart from that, yeah, that, that last few minutes, uh, we looked out on our feet. We looked dead <laughs> in some regards, but we went on the scoreboard and we managed to keep them out. And to keep them out, great catch from Andrew Mano, get a penalty, go to the end of the field and score ourselves uh, just to see that it just uh, gives that little bit of breathing space. Question about Jordan Abdul, who's saying how much he loves it. New team, you know, new surroundings, yeah. and for him, a, a fresh start. And he was outstanding today. He was outstanding, like I said, with Theo pulling out and uh, Caesar playing fullback. You know, Caesar's not a fullback, but he's, he's come in and done a tremendous job. Obviously, we had Jaden, Jaden Nicarim, Rachel Morgan, and Theo missing, so we had to put it together. I thought Hugo Tison came in. He's come from reserve grade for us and, and, and played in a high-level game there and done really well. But Jordan Abdul was a maestro. He, he had, you know, he had hands on the ball more times than I've probably seen him, you know, for a long, long time. Um, and the key with Jordan is to keep challenging him, keep challenging him, pushing himself to be the best he can be. He's in an happy place. He's in a, he's in a good spot mentally at the minute and uh, physically he's, he's improving all the time. So yeah, he, he come up with some really, really big plays for us today. Well, final question. I mentioned it at the start of the interview. Catalan against Saints next Saturday. Already we can't wait. Well, talk about rivals round this week. I think that's probably one of the best rivalries. We don't have a local derby, but I don't know how it, it sort of morphed itself into that in some regard for us. You know, um, I think it probably goes back to you know, the, the Champs Cup semi-final in, in 2018 where... You know, we had a, that shock win and we went to Wembley and then ever since then the games have been like uh, uh, ferocious uh, games. We, we all sat yesterday, we all sat, we got off the plane, we sat and watched Wigan the Saints. We were we were enjoying that, enjoying the battle, seeing the two, two teams go at it and uh, that's what we want next, next week. Thanks, Steve. We look forward to it. Safe trip home. No problem. Thank you. Well, no wonder he was happy, Terry. Uh, we talked about that defensive set at the end, but that was, that was just an epic game, another epic Easter game, wasn't it? Yeah, well, the, f the final 10 minutes, like, I'm sure they'll be proud of what his side's done, like the game plan that they stuck to. You know, Cesar Ruggier, like he's saying, just his 16th career appearance, Catalan appearance. Tison just fourth appearance for Catalan, so incredible. They've done it tough, but Jordan Abdullah thought he absolutely nailed it with his kicking game over the in the, in the corner. He was brilliant. The way that... It, he just turned Warrington around, kept putting him under some pressure. And obviously the scoreboard says it all. And Josh Fulis just couldn't quite manage to, to get all the ball. Tom Johnson taps the ball back inside. And Rougier goes in. And they're so excited, Catalan. But all this work that they did up the other end of the field was backed up by the excellent defence that they did near their own try line as well. Good offload from Jordan Abdul. He gets that ball away. Romano then looks for his winger in Tom Johnson, who goes in for his second try of the game. But then all of a sudden you think, well, they couldn't come back. They're going to have a say in this game. James Harrison just offers himself in front of all the Warrington fans. He goes over for a try, gives them a lifeline through just some hard effort, graft, determination, gets him over the line. And another man who I thought had a, a really big game, George Williams, he just does his old teammate, Mickey McLaurin. They were laughing, at, laughing after the game regarding that try that he scored. And he was at the, the heart of everything, George Williams. And it's a different team, this Warrington side I've seen over recent years. But Catalan nailed it right the way at the end. Again, it was that big kick into the sun. Jordan Abdul follows up. He benefits. And they come away with the spoils, which will make their trip back home to the south of France a lot easier as well because they knew that they had to play for the full 80 minutes to get the result here against a very determined and a good Warrington side. Catalans win, though. Yeah, Steve McNamara happy, but uh, we're joined now uh, by the, the Warrington coach, Sam Burgess. You gave it a real go at the end, Sam, but I guess un undone by, by a slow start. Yeah, he probably summed up quite well. We, um, we start slow both halves, really, and we... You know, we've worked hard on our defence over the off-season and we just really didn't see that tonight, so a bit of work to do. 18-0 down, you were always up against it, but you, to be fair, the team sh showed a lot of character in, in, in coming back twice. And at 28-24, at it was nearly, so nearly your game, you had a, a massive spell on the Catalan line. 
Yeah, well, nil is not good enough in this game. So, you know, we, we've got a bit to work on. We can take some things out of it, uh, no doubt about that. But um, we, we just missed the jump uh, physically and defensively. We just didn't get our jobs done. So, a bit, bit of work to do, but um, plenty to take away. Yeah, I mean, you're still very much challenging. You've got a big two weeks coming up, of course, haven't you, with, uh, with Leeds away. Uh, in the Super League, live on Sky Sports, and then Saints away in the Cup. It's a, it's a big couple of weeks for the club. Yeah, well, we've got to fix a few things up before then, so otherwise, especially against uh, you know the bigger teams, we've got to put some more value into our defence. But we've got a great run. It'll be, it'll be a great test for our culture uh, and see where we've come as a club. Thanks, Sam. Just one final question. You, you, you've thrown your heart and soul into this since you arrived. Are you, are you still able to enjoy it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, today was a tough one to enjoy, but uh, yeah, really loving it. Really enjoying my time here. Thanks, Sam. Appreciate oh, your thank time. Thank you. Cheers, guys. Yeah, he, he's, he's right to be disappointed because they, they undid themselves at the start of both halves, didn't they? Uh, but for for so long, they they gave themselves a sniff. Uh, but Catalan in the end just have just have that little grasp on proceedings. Yeah, just that bit of class with the kicking game from Jordan Abdul was probably the difference. But that's a determ that's a, a very sad and disappointed coach Sam Burgess. Now he said that the the start of either half probably cost them the result, and and he's right, you know. Well, here we go. Uh, Warrington actually had the possession, didn't they? Or most of the possession. Um, they actually played really well, but... Yeah, have a look. Missed tackles, well, errors. Well, the missed tackles from both sides, but the, the possession, the metres, absolutely nothing in it. Penalties, nothing in it. Do, do you know what? It was just come down to a bit of class. At the end of the day, what won them the game was the kicking game from Jordan Abdul. So, Catalan winning. 32-24, they're second in the table on points difference behind St. Helens. But rivals round has still got two games to go. Coming up very shortly, Salford taking on Lee, live on Sky Sports Action. Then the last match of the weekend. Can London win their first match of the season? They take on the Huddersfield Giants. The answers at 5-3 on Sky Sports Action. On Sunday night, a huge fight live on Sky Sports Action. Unbeaten heavyweight rivals Fabio Wardley and Fraser Clark go head-to-head -head for the British and Commonwealth titles at the O2 Arena. No love lost there. Live at 6 o'clock on Sky Sports Action. But for the Catalan Dragons, it's a big win. Five wins out of six. Next up, it's St. Helens live on Sky Sports next weekend. Catalan win, 32-24. Sky Sports, feel it all.